Okay, so 10.1, we have the three-dimensional coordinate system. So before we've just been doing two-dimensional with x and y, now we're adding z into there. So our x, y, z plane looks like this. So we have x axis, y axis, and z axis, which pokes out of the top of it. So if I had like x and y that was flat on a paper, z would just be coming straight up. So it just adds a third dimension to it. And then it doesn't stop there, it continues, so we have like the negative directions also. So for example one, we have to plot the points on web assign and on the quiz. You won't be asked to plot, but you'll have to pick which one or like it'll give you the graph like this and you'll have to be able to name the point. So I'm gonna draw my X, Y, Z plane. So this is X, this would be the negative part of X. I have Y here, that'll be the negative and the positive. And then Z comes right out of the top of it. And then that'll be the negative part. So I'm going to plot the point 2, negative 3, 3. So the first numbers are X, second numbers are Y, third numbers are Z. So I'm going to go 2 in the positive direction on the X axis. I'm going to go 3 in the negative direction on the Y axis. So right now I'm at here. And then from that point, I go up 3. So if 3 on Z would be up here, it's like that much, this length. So I go up that length there. So that would be our point. So to determine Z, are you going to just look at the dot and then right or left? I mean, your dot has to be like in the general direction. And again, you won't have to plot it, but you'll have to look at a graph like this and be able to name the coordinate of that point. So Z is the hardest one to determine because if you look at our graph here, so they also graphed two, two, negative three here. So I'm looking at this point. So that point, if you look at it like straight on, negative three on Z would be one, two, three. So it should be about there. But negative three is talking about the length that it goes down. So a lot of people, because I did this with I period yesterday, so a lot of people thought that this would be like, negative five because it looks like it's at negative five but it already came out to here and then it went down negative three so x and y are going to be the easiest to point for z you have to think about like the length that it goes down or the length that it goes up just like here we go up three even though it kind of looks like i guess here it looks like it's at three on z but the z part can kind of get a little tricky so you want to think about like how far you're going up or how far you're going down Next, we're going to be asked to find the distance between two points. So our distance formula is the same thing that we've done before, but the only difference is that we add z to it. So instead of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, we are also adding z2 minus z1 squared, and then we take the square root of all of that. So it's the same distance formula, we just also include z. Yep. So to find the distance between these two points, I have x1, y1, z1, and x2, y2, z2. So just plug everything into our distance formula. x2 would be 1 minus 0 squared plus y2 is 4 minus 1 squared plus z2 is negative 2 minus 3 squared. And from here we solve. So 1 minus 0 would be 1 squared. 4 minus 1 is 3 squared. And negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5 squared. So this would be 1 plus 9 plus 25, which is the square root of 35. Can I simplify the square root of 35? No. So if we had like this point and this point, 
the distance is like the diagonal line here. Next, we have the midpoint formula. Does our midpoint formula look a little familiar? Yep, it's the same, but we're just including z1 plus z2 divided by 2. So it's the same distance formula, we're just putting z in there also. So again, I like to label my points before I put them into the formula. So I have x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2. So the midpoint would be x1 plus x2, so 5 plus 0 over 2, y1 plus y2, negative 2 plus 4 over 2, and z1 plus z2, which would be 3 plus 4 over 2. So we would get 5 halves, 2 over 2 would be 1, and 7 halves. That's our midpoint. Next, we have the equation of a sphere. And you guessed it, it's the same thing as the equation of a circle, but we're just including z in there. So we have x minus h squared plus y minus k squared plus z minus j squared is equal to r squared. So our center is h, k, j. j is just part of the vertex. Yeah, which in a sphere would be a center. And then it's equal to r squared, and our radius is r. So example four, we have to find the standard form of the equation of a sphere with center 2, 4, 3, and radius 3. So this would be our h, k, j. We just plug it in. So I have x minus 2 squared plus y minus 4 squared plus z minus 3 squared is equal to r squared, and r is 3, so that would be 9. There's one on the web assign where it gives you the endpoints of the diameter of the sphere. So how do you think we could find the standard form of the equation of a sphere just given the endpoints? We would have to find the midpoint first. So you would use the midpoint formula that we used in the last one. So there's a question like that on WebAssign. So when you find the middle, that's the h, k, and j that you do? Mm -hmm. And then the radius, or you, you just find the distance between the midpoint and then? Yep, you would just find the distance between the midpoint and just one of the endpoints. Okay. This would be our radius. So example five, we have to find the center and the radius of the sphere given by this equation. How do you think we can find the center and the radius? We have to complete the square. So we put our x's together, so it'll be x squared minus 2x. Leave a little space there. I'll put my y's together. So this will be y squared plus 4y. Leave a little space and my z's together. So this will be z squared minus 6z equals negative 8 because we'll move the negative or the 8 over to the other side and make it negative 8. Alright, so we have to complete the square with x, y, and z. So what's that little formula that I use to complete the square? B over 2 squared. So my b here is negative 2 over 2 squared, so I have negative 1 squared. So what would go in my parentheses squared? X minus, X minus 1. And then I'm adding what to this side? One. I'm adding 1 because 1 squared would be positive 1, so I have to add 1 to the other side also. So let's do the same thing with the y's. I have 4 over 2 squared, which would be 2 squared. So what goes into my parentheses squared down here? Y plus 2 squared. And then what am I adding here? I'm adding 4, so I have to add 4 to the right side also. 
And we do the same thing with disease. I have negative six over two squared. So this would be negative three squared. What's gonna go in my parentheses? Z minus three squared. And then what am I adding? I'm adding nine, so I have to add nine to the right side too. So it'll be negative eight plus one plus four plus nine. So that gives me six. So once we have this in standard form, we can identify what our center and our radius are. So what would my center be? One, negative two, and three. Perfect. One, negative two, and three. So just change the signs. And then what's my radius? Square root six. Awesome. Square root six. So how we find the x, y trace, what variable are we missing here? Z. So I would plug in zero for z. So when it asks you for the x, y trace, you plug a 0 in for z. So if this is z, y trace, you plug in a 0? Yep. Okay. So you plug in a 0 for whatever one's missing. So I have x minus 3 squared plus y minus 2 squared plus 0 plus 4 squared is equal to 5 squared, which would be 25. So I really only have to work out the 0 plus 4 squared. So that would be 16. So how do I get that 16 to the other side? Subtract 16. So here I have x minus 3 squared plus y minus 2 squared is equal to what's 25 minus 16? 9. Nine. When it asks for the x, y trace, you plug a zero in for z. So whatever one's missing. So here we have x, y, we're missing z, so we plug a zero in for that. It could ask for like the y, z trace, we would plug a zero in for x. So this would be my equation of the sphere, or of the circle now, because the x, y trace would just be the circle. And then you could just graph the circle. Again, you won't have to graph, but on web assignment, you'll have to pick like which graph matches up with this. Remember, our x, y plane is now, like it's just laying flat. Usually we're used to it being like x, y, but now it's like flat and z comes out of it. So keep that in mind when working out the web assignments.